this is uh or what's called like mole skin you have that like it has like a velvety feel to it okay Hey everybody, so you might remember the last video I was set up in a clothing show and a picking buddy of mine brought me some stuff to show me. Uh, I did buy some stuff from him in that video, but he also brought me another batch of early football equipment that we've been discussing. He found it, it was several hours away, it was in like an attic discovery that he ended up finding. He reached out to me, asked the value and, and what I would pay, which I told him. He used that to sort of you know, make his deal and negotiate the price and then he brought it to me at that show. So I had already known about it, but I figured I would make a video just about this because it's such a cool group of early football equipment and right in time for the Super Bowl as well. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I wish it was a flyer's jacket or something, but. You know, it was on, uh, Chris was on Whatnot, and there was a girl in a yard sale, like just with her phone, at yard sale, going to yard sale to yard sale, and she was at a yard sale, they were like five bucks a piece. I'm like, I'll take them. So people, it's pretty fun to you go to yard sale and just from your couch with other people, you know? One piece in there to me is really odd. This is cool. People love the vintage like sweatshirts too. Okay. Yeah, so these are definitely uh, unusual. I wonder if these are homemade though. I've never seen this. Like they're riveted. This might be like a homemade shoulder pad, which is cool. I could tell in the image that I couldn't tell. I never saw that style before. Okay. But I think they're probably homemade. Interesting. Yeah. What is that? That's a shin guard. Shane, I was thinking one. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. I know in the image the guy had it on his arm, right? But that's definitely a shin guard. This is uh, or what's called like mole skin. You have that like, it has like a velvety feel to it. Okay. Is the other piece part of it or is that? No, that was something else. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I didn't think it was. Okay, interesting. Yeah. I think that's like an elbow pad. I think of that was what was the swallowing baseball uniform. Yeah. Sometimes there's a mark on there. Okay. Put the shoes first. Baseball. There's a lot of, uh, there are a lot of variations with these, with, uh, but these are both the standards type, okay. but like the, the hole patterns, you can see the hole patterns are slightly different. Like this one has more holes. I had to look that up in terms of what, which one's earlier. 
th this one has a patent date, which this one patent date was probably worn off. It's 1891. And it's actually the same on the top, right? On uh, patent date there and there. Yeah. Well, it doesn't have a date, but yeah, morals patent. Oh, I, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This one, that stuff is probably all worn off. It looks like they purposely wore that off Shade that. for some okay. reason. Yeah. Interesting they put that there. They Yeah, very cool. I but I don't know this off the top of my head, which the dating by the holes. Okay. How's it going, man? I don't know if you had a flat right. So those are all uh they're the same, right? Yeah, those are tagged, the other one. I just picked this one up too. I don't know if you're a Steelers guy, but that one's Yeah. 20 bucks on that one. That. You want to put it back up here? Yeah, that's cool. Thank you. I think I might yeah, absolutely. I also just put out a bunch of, a couple of Steeler jackets. Yeah, those are really Yeah, yeah. There's no tag them because literally somebody walked in with them a second ago. So it's 1500. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll keep trying to Appreciate find you. It. Yeah, cool. absolutely. Cool. Yeah, keep it, do your picking for sure. All right, so back with the, the group of items I purchased. So again, I paid $1,500 for this group. Uh, and there were a few key pieces, uh, the reason I bought the collection, but so there was an early football uniform. So first, a pair of in reeded football pants. So reeded meaning that these the sh the thigh pads are like a thin wooden reed or wooden strip. They also have a type called slatted that have wider, wider pads here, but these are reeded. And I didn't see a maker's mark on these, but I would believe these are spalding, pretty large size. Obviously they have some discoloration present, but still, you don't see them too commonly. There was a pair of, let's say, 1920s baseball pants. They are tags folding. They came with the belt. A pair of uh, football, uh, baseball cleats. Again, they're relatively early. Uh, Save the best stuff for last, but there's a pair of like 40s youth model football pants. And this is like an early, either like, football practice jersey or just like a early sweatshirt I would say 30s 40s and this stuff does pretty well like the early uh, you know sweat sweatshirt kind of material there's a pair of early socks there's one shin guard so these are used in both soccer and football uh, most players wore two but sometimes kickers would only wear one so the fact that one is there's only one here doesn't mean that there's one missing sometimes the player only wore one. There's a sole elbow pad. This is one of the cooler pieces in the group. So very rudimentary, probably handmade either by Shoesmith or by somebody's mom, pair of shoulder pads. Um, they have early rivets. Pretty, pretty uh, crude, but pretty well made at the same time. So uh, you don't see this early of shoulder pads too often. I mean, it'd be better if they were like a a known brand but still pretty cool there's a pair of nose guards and so i've handled a lot of these over the years these are moral nose guards these are patented in 1891 let's see the patent date there 1891 uh, these are slightly different models and you can tell by the the hole layout this one has a little bit more holes on the right than the left this one is sort of carved a bit and does have the, the bite plate missing. This one has a modified bite plate with a leather on the outside and then with a little strip of leather on the inside. So uh, these these do pretty well. Usually you can get four to $500 for 
you know, for intact nose guards, especially when they have their original, original strapping. So the pair of them. All right, so a brief interlude here to explain nose guards. Uh, they were first introduced in the early 1890s, went out of vogue about 1920. And you can see here, they would be worn by the player with the strap around the head. They would bite on the mouth plate and they would protect the player's nose and mouth. Uh, it's relatively uncommon to see them in photos being worn like this. Usually, like this photograph, you'll see the player with the nose guard hanging around their neck. Uh, there are three basic types of nose guards. This nose guard, which is the same as what I picked up in this video, is the 1891 patent date moral nose guard. This is the most common one you'll find. Still not common, but the most common of the group. Uh, then, in 1911, they came out with this dial, which has a removable mouth plate. So if the mouth plate would get bitten up and broken, like it was, was the case in the ones I bought in this video, you could replace it with a new mouthpiece. Again, these came in, in fashion 1911, a little less common than the moral style. Generally same value, a little bit more value, but typically about the same value. And then the rarest of the more common type of three nose guards is this type called a bat wing nose guard. And this type very rarely shows up, commands pretty good money, I would say 2,000 to 2,500 on average, and maybe some a little bit less, some a little bit more. And these were basically worn by players who had cheek injuries that had that extra protection around the face. And that's why just a lot of them aren't out there. There are some other very rare styles of nose guards, but if you're gonna find one, it's typically gonna be one of these three. And then the best piece for last is this early moleskin and leather flat top football helmet. So this is a Spalding brand. You can see the embossed mark right there. Pretty, pretty good shape, pretty good condition. These are good and they don't show up as often as they used to. I've, I've handled a lot of flat top helmets over the years and you just don't see them like you used to. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed watching. Please subscribe.